What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Guys, Jeff Saturday recently was on on ESPN talking with Dominique Foxworth a little bit about the whole Colts quarterback situation. I know it's gotten a lot of Colts Nation talking about this. I mean, obviously, we know the move itself has a lot of Colts fans talking, a lot of people in the media talking. But Jeff Saturday, who you know obviously knows this organization very well and knows some of the ins and outs, he had a few interesting things to say. And I know it's definitely gotten some Colts people talking in the last couple of days. So I wanted to do a reaction on this, kind of watch through the entirety of this video, give my overall thoughts there on some of the comments that Saturday did have to say, because I think it is very telling that there are definitely a few things where you're like, oh, wow, I didn't really think about that. Or Jeff Saturday knows a little bit. You know, that's going to be something interesting to monitor moving forward. So wanted to kind of jump in and listen to this and kind of talk about this uh, when in regards to what Jeff Saturday had to say in this conversation regarding Anthony Richardson, the Colts quarterback situation and everything like that. So without further ado, let's get into it. Joe Flacco has been named the starter for the rest of the year. I think a lot of the sports media thought that Richardson was being benched for tapping out or um, was going to be a bench for the next four weeks because of how difficult the Colts schedule was. And they wanted him to sort of um, sort of recalibrate his mind and where he's at. And since then we've gotten the, the, the notebook em emptying news dump that people thought he wasn't preparing the right way for certain things that his off season didn't connect with receivers the right way. Schefter used the term seismic shift and tweeted out these stats about first round quarterbacks being benched and not making pro bowls with the original team that drafted them. Um, what do you make of what's going on in Indy and this decision and how sort of quick it's been? Yeah, just not a fan, right? When I, when I, so when you draft a guy fourth in the draft that has played 12 or 13 games in college, um, development should couple in that conversation. Let's just be real, right? I mean, I, I think it was Bill Parcells who put, he, he put it out. He wanted like a starter to have, I don't, I don't remember, it was like 30 or 40 starts or something before he would really want to consider them. And and I don't know that has to be that many, but I agree that the, the more guys play in college, the better equipped they usually are to come in and take over a, an NFL offense. So that being said, I would have liked, if the Colts were going to draft him four, I would have liked to see you either say, okay, we're not going to start him year one and two. We're going to let Minshew be the guy in year one. We're going to let Flacco be the guy in two. We're going to kind of take our lumps, do whatever. We're going to build around them um, because those guys aren't going to cost any money. He's on a rookie contract. And then by year three, we're going to lay all in to Anthony Richardson, and now we're going to go, right? We're going to go with him. We're going to go with his athleticism, and now he's figured out how to prepare, how to get this thing going, how to lead a team, all of the intangibles that you are now saying that are, quote, being leaked out, which basically means somebody's agenda is being filled yeah. from the front office, just saying that, right? So, Well, yeah, so there's a lot there, even in the, those first couple statements there. And I completely agree with what Jeff Saturday is saying. Like, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, you know, outside of Anthony Richardson, a lot of the quarterbacks that came in when he was drafted, a lot of the quarterbacks that are coming in this year, I mean, they've had a lot of college experience, right? A lot of the guys that are doing well have had a lot of college experience. Now, of course, we know, like, you know, drafting a rookie quarterback can be a crapshoot. Sometimes you don't know, you know, if they're going to pan out or not. Um, but I think that's interesting is like, yeah, obviously the more college experience, that's definitely very beneficial for them to run an NFL offense. And so it's kind of interesting because it's like, well, if the Colts knew some of these things, if they had an issue with some of these things, why, you know, number one, why didn't they just sit Anthony Richardson? If that was going to be the move, let it be the move. Now, we, we were all saying, though, you know, to be fair, we were all saying, you know, start this kid. But if the Colts felt like he wasn't necessary, if it wasn't necessary to start him right away, then why roll with him for the start of the season? I mean, it just seems like the Colts, what their plan was, and now kind of what they're telling us, it just doesn't add up a whole lot, right? It's like the Colts had one plan that they kind of laid out for everybody, and now they're kind of going back on that. So I definitely agree with that 100% with what Jeff Saturday is saying there. It just doesn't seem like the Colts are doing what they had preached and really what their plan has been from the start. So it's just it's kind of odd that the Colts are where they are right now and and kind of what they're doing, you know, when it, in regards to Anthony Richardson. So I just found that very very interesting and then obviously the other comment that 
he had about, you know, Chris Ballard and his job. And it's pretty obvious it's Chris Ballard. I mean, when you look at it, Jim Irsay is the owner and Shane Steichen. I mean, he's in year two, right? So, I mean, you may be, maybe Shane Steichen, but I think a lot of signs are pointing to Chris Ballard here, in my opinion, trying to save his job, which is just kind of odd considering the fact that, you know, you, everybody would assume that Chris Ballard's job is tied to the quarterback that he drafted, right? Everybody would assume that, him and Shane Steichen. Um, so it's just kind of odd that that's kind of the play, right? Um, and I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Is like you knew this kid had problems. You knew this kid needed experience. You knew he might not be the guy right away. Like you knew that like he has never really had the opportunity, like a lot of these other quarterbacks had, to be in a competent offense to kind of be in a pro style offense in any capacity. Right. So having to lead a, you know, starting offense, like if that was the move, I wouldn't have liked it. I wouldn't have agreed with it, but I would have understood it. And now it seems like, you know, you ran with him and you you did, did all these things. And now you're figuring out these concerns. It's like, well, how did you do all those, you know, months and months of, you know, research into this guy if now that's the solution and that's the conclusion you've come to with Anthony Richardson, I don't know. It just seems kind of fishy right there. And so just a lot of interesting comments there right off the top, but let's continue on. Let's make sure that we say things are being dumped. It's being dumped for a reason. All right. So all mm-hmm. the fans who listen to all of it, it's being said by somebody who's protecting a job somewhere. All right. So let's just Ballard. put that out there. But so now you've benched a kid after 10 games in the NFL. If you didn't like his preparation leading up to the season, then why did you play him again this season? Like, none of that stuff makes sense to me if that's the real deal. It, it's, it makes it very easy to say it now that you've benched him, okay? And so my point for Anthony Richardson is either either you he shouldn't have done what you did to him now, and and now the Colts are back in the same situation they've been in near, nearly for a decade now since Andrew Luck left with the Phillip Rivers, the Matt Ryans, right? Like the, 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 we're going to bring in an aging quarterback who's not going to be here. Yeah, Foles. We're not going to be here very long. We're going to stay over for a little bit. We're going to win. We're going to be uh, 500-ish. You know, we're not going to make the playoffs or we're going to make the playoffs and lose in, in, in round one. We're not going to win the division. I, I don't know how long it's been since they win the division, but it, we're not going to push for the division. None of that stuff. Like, like that's just not the Colts that I know and that I played for. And so it's just a it's a different way about however that it's being it's being done. And and look, I, I didn't like the, anti, the the tap out. I'll be honest, it pissed me off as an mm-hmm. offensive lineman. Right. Man, my QB ain't coming out because he's freaking tired. But I'd have had that conversation with him by myself in the locker room. It wouldn't. It didn't have to just be a media blow up. And I would have looked at the media and been like, hey, freaking pipe down, dude. This is my job, right? You report on us. I got this in-house. I'm going to handle this. We'll get him right. You you let us worry about our own guy. But it wasn't like that, right? It was and, – and, and, and maybe you bench him for a week. I'm okay with even that. We're going to bring Flacco in. We're going to show him, hey – you can't act this way or we're going to do it differently. But to make it a, a hey, he's done for the year, and now all of a sudden it's not an experiment. We're going the Joe Flacco route. So best case scenario for the Colts, you find your way into the playoffs and you draft 20th, whatever that is, 18th. Are you getting better? Like, is Anthony Richardson better? Is Flacco going to be your guy next year? Like, what's the what's the long term vision and plan of how this organization moves forward? Um, you're seeing Jaden Daniels, you're seeing Caleb Williams, you're seeing Bo Nix for guys. Like, you're yeah. seeing a lot of guys have some success, and I'm just wondering, okay, all those guys are having success. We got an outlier here. What is you know what's our what's our issue? What do we do? how do we develop them? If we're a team that believes in development, we got to develop them. And right now that doesn't look like it's going to happen. That's a hundred percent. Right. I mean, everything the Colts have done, it really, everything the Colts have done under Chris Ballard has been the complete opposite and completely wrong in, in so many ways. I mean, obviously this benching, we all know the Colts have done it in the worst way possible. And I love what Jeff said is like, Hey, I didn't like the tap out. You know, I didn't like the tap out either. But, you know, it just feels like a very a competent and well-run organization would have handled this in-house, like Jeff said. And the Colts didn't. I don't feel like the Colts have really done that. They've let the, let the media kind of control the narrative in a lot of ways. 
And, you know, even, even if they did bench him for a week or two, you know, I even said that, like, I'm okay with that. You know, like I, I didn't love it, but I understood it a little bit more, but to just basically say that statement of he's done for the year, it just seems like the Colts have completely mismanaged this situation. And it just seems like an organization, like I said, it's rudderless and at, the top of the, you know, the thing here, I mean, Jim Irsay obviously is the biggest, you know, one of the biggest problems with this because he's allowed this to go on for so long. But Chris Ballard, the one who is doing the personnel decisions, you know, who obviously from what Jeff has said, if this is true, you know, he's basically trying to save his job. I mean, that's, that's extremely, extremely indictative on Chris Ballard. I mean, 100%. I mean, Chris Ballard, let's be honest, he is the gem of mediocrity. I mean, the Colts have been nothing short of mediocre under Chris Ballard. I mean, it's the continual cycle, and we're going back into it. So, Jim Ursay, if you ever listen to this podcast, which I don't know if he ever will, but if he ever listens to this episode, Jim Ursay, I have to speak to you specifically because you have an option here. You have a couple options here. You know, everybody will say there's three options. To me, there's really only two. Number one, Jim Mersey, you recognize Chris Ballard is not the guy. This organization has no direction under him. This organization has not won the playoff. He has not has had what? One playoff win, has never won the division, has never won a week one game. He has a losing record. You've never won in Jacksonville since he's been here. You've never had a franchise guy that you've stuck with for multiple years. And that's your GM. And you're sitting here with a roster, right, in a lot of ways that's ready to win now. But it doesn't seem like there is the right pieces in place, specifically at the quarterback position right now, uh, to help you do that. Right. Because obviously, if you're not rolling with Anthony Richardson, you're saying Joe Flacco's our best chance to win. I just, it doesn't seem, this doesn't add up. It really doesn't add up to me at all with the direction the Colts are going and just everything the Colts have done under Chris Ballard, it feels like has been backwards. I mean, you've been on the quarterback carousel for nearly a decade now and it's continuing. And so, Jim Ursay, stop the madness. Stop the madness. You have a choice here, or you can continue to rely on the loyalty and the relationships rather than the business side of things. And if that's the case, Jim Ursay, then you need to seriously consider handing off the keys to somebody else, specifically somebody in your family, because this organization cannot continue to putter around for the next half a decade again when it comes to this position. right? They can't consistently be mediocre. I mean, I know Jim Ursay hates to lose as much as the next guy, probably even more than the next guy. And if that's the case... I think it starts with just a complete scrub on your organization here because it's just not been it. It's just been that mediocrity. And especially if, like you said, like Jeff said, what's the plan? (laughs) What is the plan when it comes to the future of your franchise? Because if, say, you do squeak into the playoffs, this is what we've been saying forever. You squeak into the playoffs. You're at pick 20. You still don't know about your future at quarterback. And you don't have an opportunity to get the guy potentially. If you steam Anthony Richardson is not that guy, You don't have the opportunity to address it in a way you need to address it. So you're kind of just in this weird continuous continuous cycle again and again. So I don't know, man. It's just it's very frustrating. And I'm glad that Jeff sees it because it's just been a routine thing with this Colts team is we're not good enough to seriously compete. but We're not bad enough either, you know, to to get a guy that can be our franchise quarterback. Right. If you say Anthony Richardson's not the guy. okay. But what's the solution going to be then? That's the biggest question mark. So if Jim Irsay is serious about winning and serious about the future of this organization, Chris Ballard will be gone after this year. The new GM will have the opportunity to decide what does he want to do with his coaching staff? Does he want to start over? What does he want to do with Anthony Richardson? Does he want to try to patch this up? right, Or does he want to look somewhere else? And if that's the case, give him all the opportunities to do that. Uh, just Jim Irsay. From the bottom of my heart, not just my heart, but from all the Colts nation, make the right decision here for the future of your franchise because the fans are fed up. The fans are tired. The media is talking about it now. I mean, it's just it's a disaster right now for the Colts. All right, so that is Jeff Saturday talking about the Colts quarterback situation. And I just kind of gave my thoughts on it. Here's what your guys' thoughts are here. Do you agree with Jeff? Do you agree kind of where we are? And do you think Jim Irsay needs to make the right decision here and fire Chris Ballard and give the new regime 
you know, bring in a new regime here in Indianapolis. Let us know all those things in the comments down below. But, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, guys, go Colts.